And if you are being abused, I would tell people that they're abusing you if they're paying for your body parts. I would, I would protect you. We do what we can to live in a better life and protect our family. So let's just take a koala, give them a bit of space out the back, chuck them in a slaughterhouse, bolt gun them in the skull, let's cut their head off. Is that ethical? Yes. Well, I fundamentally disagree with that. I think that that's exploitation and murder. So the sign says, uh, saving koalas while eating meat makes you a hypocrite. Yes. And you don't think it does? Um, so I think there are two arguments for why it makes you a hypocrite. Okay. And I think that one of them can be reasonably easily debunked and the other is pretty solid and I don't have any arguments against it. Okay. Do you want to know what my, my argument is? Yes. So you know what to debunk? Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm saying that if you care about one species of animal while sim simultaneously having five other species chopped up on your plate, slaughtered in a slaughterhouse, I'm saying that makes you a moral hypocrite. Ah, see, that's actually the point that I think can be reasonably easily debunked. One, um, there are a few reasons why. I think the first is that even though koalas themselves are not necessarily endangered, um, the populations that do not currently have chlamydia are, and they are um, quite heavily affected by the fire. Um, they are a massive tourist attraction for Australia, and so they're quite in, they're reasonably important for our economy um, compared to um, other things. Cows, they might be many things, but they're not endangered. I would also like to, um, my second point is that dying by fire or suffocation is fundamentally a very painful way to die. And if you're only sourcing meat from ethical sources, um, the animals that you eat and will die will be killed in a much less painful way than the koalas would be. Okay. So you've got a humane, you've got a humane slaughter argument and you've got an endangered species argument. Yeah? Yeah, to an extent, yes. Okay. So, so you, you're saying that because a species is endangered, they have more moral value than a certain species that isn't, yeah? Um, well, firstly, to an extent I think that, but let's forget about the moral value for a second and think about what I said about tourism. Koalas are fundamentally, you know, they're a symbol of Australia. They're, they're on a lot of our stuff, they're a reason why quite a few people come here. I don't um, care about that, by the way. I yeah, think I'm if aware. you're exploiting animals for money, I, I think that that's not ethical at all, in any way. So an economic argument could be used to keep slavery in place. I don't, I don't care for that. That's not a moral argument. Okay. Well, they I, did use the economic argument to keep human slavery in place. You know that, yeah? Yes, I am aware. Did that justify that? No. Okay. So well, let's go into endangered species, all right? right? Let's just say you belong to a human race that has less uh, uh, people in it, that's it's starting to die out, then let's just say uh, another race of human being. Do you think that that individual from that race has uh, more moral value than the one from uh, a race of sh human beings that has a higher population in the eyes of those two individuals? Um, I think that... Um, hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Take a cow, take a koala. No. Yeah. I don't think so. Okay. So this is what my argument is hinging on. The, the value of those sentient animals individually. Who matters more, the cow or the koala? Okay, so what about the uh, pain of the deaths then? What have you got yeah, for that? Can, okay, we can talk about that. Okay. Now, uh, the koalas are dying of this fire that, you know, w whether it's natural or human caused, we don't... Pretty it, human caused. Okay, it could be human caused. That's not my debate here. Um, it's, a, it's a fire. Hmm. They're victims of the fire. We're subjugating cows, we're, we're breeding pigs, mass breeding chickens, sticking them in farms and slaughtering them by the billion. Okay? Yes, as I was saying, I was speaking only of ethically farmed animals. Okay. Us. So, is there ethically farmed animals in Australia? In Australia? What would be your idea of ethical farming so I can, do, I can sort of oppose that or debate that? What's your idea of ethical farming and ethical slaughter? Hmm. Um, so firstly, the animal has to be knocked out before it dies. A shot, a shot in the head? Um, yes, sure, but not while it's still alive. Okay, let's talk about- Sorry, for, not while it's still awake. Let's, let's talk about the breeding process and yes. can that, so what does that look like ethically to you? Mass breeding and, you know. Um, so they have to be, um, 
on grass for a certain period of the day, and for a certain period of the day they're in a the barn, they can't be forced to, like, you can't, like, lift one up with, like, a string line and stick it on the other one. Okay. You have to let them do what they don't want to do. Okay. Okay. So that's you're so how they breed. They just uh, decide to, yeah. So if you give them a bit of room on the grass, yeah, that, that's okay to stab them in the throat then, shoot them in the head? Yes. As long as you shoot them in the head first to knock them out? Yes. Okay. So that's your idea of ethical in the animal agriculture? Yes. Okay. For, and then let's just replace the cows with koalas now. Is that still ethical? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, hmm. No, wait, hang on. The koalas are still, as I said, for the non-chlamydia populations, endangered. But we already talked about that, didn't we? We covered that argument. Yes, you agreed okay, with fine, me. Fine, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's off the table. Endangered is off the table when we're talking about the morals of the individual, yeah? Yes. Okay. So, so let's just take a koala, give them a bit of space out the back, chuck them in a slaughterhouse, bolt gun them in the skull, and cut their head off. Is that ethical? Yes. Well, I fundamentally disagree with that. I think that that's exploitation and murder. If, if I go by all of your points of what, um, of what you think about koalas through that logic, yes, that's ethical. But I, I, hmm, I don't emotionally think that. What does ethical mean to you? Hmm. I mean, not the dictionary definition. I just want you to know what you think about. Put, let's just use human welfare as a standard for ethics, because that's probably something you'd understand. What would what would ethical mean in the human context? Um, all of the UN's human rights. Okay. So the right not to be treated as property. Yes. The right to life. Yes. Okay, you deny all those rights when you breed animals and shoot them in the skull and cut their head off, you know that, right? Yes. That, isn't that blatant hypocrisy by your own moral standard? Um, well, I fundamentally think that human and dolphin brains are advanced to an extent where we are to, we're kind of worth more. Oh, oh, really? And not all humans are the same in their mental capacity, yeah? We have the... No, but in different ways. Okay. Um, some of us are wise, some of us are charismatic, and some of us um, are intelligent in different okay. ways. Most humans have... I get it. I yeah. understand your argument. You're placing... Uh, your understanding of... Yes. You're placing value on intelligence and uh, complex cognitive thought? Yes. Okay. And what about the mentally handicapped humans? You take away their rights? They no, don't... they can still think. Why? Very well. I've... They can think better I... than a pig? Yes. Well, I've I've so met mentally handicapped people and they're very capable of, okay. um, not always. especially. So not, I'm talking. I've met mentally handicapped people that can't even move their hand. But yeah, we, we don't deny them, them of their rights. Nothing to do with your brain, does it? Well, to an extent, it does, but okay. not with your ability to think. No. Do you think that because someone has lesser intelligent capacity or complex thought capacity? they then uh, don't deserve the right to life or to not be subjugated and exploited For and killed. For humans, that is more difficult to judge because we, as I said, we have different types of intelligence. An IQ exactly. test isn't a way to... But we still decide to do things by human standards because we are humans. Yeah, so everything so that's a supremacist attitude, yeah? Thinking. That, do you think that we have a supremacist attitude? Humans matter more than animals even though you can have human beings with low com cognitive thought, we can have mentally handicapped human beings, we still protect them. We would never do what we do to mentally handicapped human beings like what we do to animals, would we? No, we wouldn't. Yeah. So the only thing separating us is species, basically. Yes, but I think that species boundary is enough. I think we're... Um, well, maybe Why? We're How does it justify it? Well, because... Okay, let's shift this a bit we are human from the beginning of time we are wired in the way that we have um you know we've grown up we've um the way we've survived is that we to an ex we're a pack species we care about other humans fundamentally okay, and we've survived to an extent also because we don't care about animals so it's kind of hardwired into our thought process i'm not saying it's logical necessarily but i'd say it would be what the majority of humans would agree on okay i, I don't care about the appealing to popularity i care, I care about being consistent and ethically and it's right definitely what i emotionally okay. think you know we've used that argument to separate us humans and to subjugate other humans they're not like us they're you know they look different they're, they they're, but 
that's all. They're cognitively the same. They just have a different skin color and that's it. Pretty much. No, that's it. But there's marginal cases of human beings that don't have the same cognitive function as you and a pig could be considered more intelligent than some human beings. That we I'm, protect those humans. As I said, there are different types of intelligence exactly. that humans have. Yeah. Cognitive function can be separated into a few types of things. I, I'm saying you're placing value on intelligence when that varies so vastly in the human species, in the human race, that we cannot possibly use that as a reason to take it away someone's rights. Among varies among humans. Like one human, the difference between someone with an IQ of say 130 or 80 isn't that large. And also, well, not on a species scale, is tiny. I'm, I'm saying there are cows that are more mentally capable than some human beings. Is that true or false? I don't think that's true. I don't think there is any cow that is more cognitively capable than a human. You haven't r seen human beings that are a brain dead handicapped or not brain dead that wouldn't imply that they're sentient but still sentient but really cannot do much well if they can't do anything but but they can probably still think and given the probably uh, given information they could think so you're saying cows can't think um not in the same way humans can no i didn't say that you're saying they can't think because when you say humans, you're, you're Not painting to the same a, extent. When you say humans, you're saying a broad brush. You're including marginal cases of mentally handicapped humans too. You're including toddlers and, and little babies as well. You're including all human beings when you say humans. I'm saying there are some cows who are intelligent. They, 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 they think they can do tricks. They can understand. They see into the future. They suffer. They're sentient. They see into the future. They can see in the t into the future. Hmm. Because if you abuse a dog or a cow, I bet you they, 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 they definitely remember it from oh, the past. recognition. Okay. Hmm. Well, if that's what you want to call it. Okay. Um, your argument is much more logically sound than mine. I'll admit defeat. Um, I'll probably still keep eating stuff, though. Eating animals who are sentient and want to live? Yes. Would you admit that you're an animal abuser if you continue to cause the suffering and death of animals knowingly, or even the murder of animals? Would you agree that by your hand, paying for those animals to be tortured and killed, uh, you are then an animal abuser? Uh, I, as I said, ethical, uh, I don't consider um, if it's ethically farmed to be torture. Yeah. Uh, so, you getting all your meat from places you've seen them be slaughtered and you're, you're ha absolutely happy with that? Uh, I haven't seen them be slaughtered, no. So where are you buying your meat from? Um, I generally, it's more towards the brands than it is the, so I make sure it has the labels on it that I look for. I have a bunch of footage here from a movie called Dominion which exposes Australian farming across the board. It's horrible. It's horrible what they're doing to these animals in these slaughterhouses. I'm yet to find an ethical slaughterhouse and I've been doing this for six years. So you might just be acting out of uh, maybe, you know, a lack of information. Right. But I, I, I'm an animal rights activist. I've so seen... You looked at every, every... Well, a lot of farms in Australia and found that essentially everything is below board. Some are better than others. But all of them are mass breeding and exploiting these animals, chucking up thousands of chickens in a shed. And then let's just go to the place where it all goes down, the slaughterhouse. I've never seen an ethical slaughterhouse. They're all horrible. Right. Um, just out of interest, the animals, do the animals see each other get slaughtered? Uh, well, let's just steel man your position and say they don't. Is that, would that be okay? I know they'll be better, but... Be better, yes. Okay, there's better ways for me to kill you. Mm -hmm. uh, me killing you is still murder. It's wrong. Mm. If I was to torture you first, I, I'd, pref I'd think I would prefer not to be tortured before I was killed. Yes. I'd also be preferred not to be exploited and killed. That would be the most ethical scenario. But those animals are living longer than they would in the wild. Some of them. They're not even from the wild. These no. are human, selectively bred animals. Over thousands of years. Yeah. Thousands of years of exploitation and changing genetics so we can c cut their heads off, basically, and eat them. And if they all got released into the wild, a lot of them wouldn't survive. I'm not arguing that for that. That's, that's insane. I wouldn't, they, they, they wouldn't survive in the wild because we've bred them to be eating animals and milking animals. So what do you suggest? I suggest we all go vegan, okay. stop uh, paying for animal abuse, yeah. and then uh, this will happen across so the board what? slowly, slowly. So we've seen in droughts to an extent in farms, animals 
often they they kind of just when they run out of resources the animals kind of starve like Are they you just, talking about me releasing animals into the wild after we all go vegan? Is that what you're, is that what you're thinking, I mean? Uh, yeah, we all go vegan, what happens? Yeah, because we, would, wouldn't, we wouldn't all go vegan at once. We'd progressively go vegan over the course of decades. Right, yeah. Starting with someone like you, who gives a shit about logic and ethics. And then, slowly, slowly, these industries would stop, what, mass breeding? They'd stop producing a product because it's all supply and demand. They only produce what we want. So we slowly, slowly attack the demand. Supply chain stops. Gradually, then we have, what, a few animals left? We can keep them in sanctuaries. Yeah. Problem solved. Right. Like, how do we justify cutting animals' heads off, even if they don't see it? Like, I can't do that to another uh, animal. I can't do that to a human being. I, 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 I personally don't want it done to myself. I'm just contradicting myself. If I, I used to be an animal-abusing hypocrite, this, which is why I changed. You know, honestly, I've kind of thought this for a while and kind of just been in denial I want to keep my lifestyle to an extent and I'm very good at lying to myself but I'm going you know I'll, I'll attempt to go vegetarian at this point I don't think I think if I try vegan I'll fail I'll try and ease my way into it I'll veganism is a moral uh, f it's a philosophy it's yes. against the exploitation and harm of animals and dairy and egg industries are both abusive and cruel to animals in the same way I, that I'm meat is. aware but yeah. the fact is that if I go vegan I believe I won't be able to take it and I'll stop after two weeks and then I'll be eating it I'll be exploiting more animals well maybe maybe but I, I think when you have the, the motivation I'm not going to give you the wrong message and no. say go vegetarian you're still an animal abuser if you're a vegetarian yes. like there's more suffering yes. in the dairy industry there's prolonged suffering yes. they live longer they have their children stolen they're all murdered they have their skin torn off their backs turned into leather and burgers I'd be giving you the wrong message if I told yes. you to go vegetarian Veganism is a philosophy against the, the exploitation and cruelty that you're in control of. So, hmm. I actually, no, that's a position that has nothing to do with the argument. That would be a uh, tangent. Um, okay. Okay, yeah, no, makes sense. If you just admit, like, that, that, that you know, you're, you're acting hypocritically yes. and you're abusing animals. Fair enough, yeah, I'd say, yeah, yeah, you're right. I appreciate the chat, mate. That was a really good chat, and you're a smart dude. And how old are you? 18. 18. Wow. So you're very smart, mate. And, you know, you've got a, a long life ahead of you. Yeah. And I hope that you act consistently with your moral framework. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm reconsidering some of the things I... Those were positions I'd held, and I'd thought about them yeah. before thinking I'd held them. But seeing it described the way you described them, when I said, yes, that is my ethical framework made me to an extent reconsider it because you're contradicting it in, uh, in yes yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't say it would be lying more like um, having a change of heart to an extent okay yeah awesome I, I recommend a movie called Dominion it's right. on uh, YouTube and it's recent exposés of all across the board mm. farms and abattoirs all in Australia and you tell me if you see uh, the gas chamber footage is horrific. I've got it all here. I don't know if you want to watch it right now. Right. But RSPCA were claiming it was humane. They fell asleep nicely. We left cameras in there. Okay. It's horrible. I'm, n I'm yet to see this ethical treatment of animals. It just doesn't exist when you're mass breeding and killing. I mean, I was unaware of that. I thought there were that farms, especially with the RSPCA certification. They, back, they backpedaled when they saw the footage. But we have to get the footage. Industry won't show us. They're selling you a product, so it's all advertisement. Well, then, how, why, how, how do they get the certification if they don't actually look at the facilities? That seems ridiculous. They get money for certifying places. RSPCA are ridiculous. They're a joke. They don't protect animals. They abuse them. They, fa they facilitate their abuse and make you feel comfortable about paying for the abuse. Good people. Right. I can show you the footage if you want to see the gas chambers uh, in Victoria. There's gas chambers all around Australia, in the UK. They're right, horrible I'm places. Kind of, um, I'm kind of doubting all food certification at the moment. Uh, do fair trade do the same thing? Uh, fair trade meat? No, everything. Fair like, trade's a bit of a different topic. When I know, but just the fact if the RSPCA a label is bogus, then are all other ethical food labels also bogus? To I can't answer that. Right. I can only answer from the animal rights position. Okay. Uh, I don't know about potatoes and stuff. They're, they're, look, 
Look, if someone's being enslaved for those vegetables and you find out, I mean, obviously we don't want to support slavery, but yes. it's vegetable farming is a different topic to enslaving yes. an animal, chopping them up into pieces and eating them. It's very direct and very easy to analyse the morals of that. So you can make choices that are very easy to make to avoid this a lot of the cruelty. Yes. When you start looking into the vegetable fields, you're like, well, there's potatoes in there, there's, there might be some pesticides sprayed on there, but it's a yeah. lot different to looking into a factory yes. farm or a slaughterhouse. Yes. All right. Animal products always involve exploitation and killing of animals, always. There's no... Okay, yeah. you've given me a lot to think about, about views I've held for a few years, I'd say. Mm. Um, but, you know, you yeah. look into it yourself, watch Dominion, yeah. Yeah. have a look, and then go try finding footage from ethical farms. I don't know. Okay. Put yourself in the animal's position, it's easier to navigate through that. And yeah. Have a good day. You too. No worries. Really good. He was smart, so he... And honest. He was smart, and he was honest. And he was also honest about not, not actually thinking that he might, he might fail, he might not change, but at least he admitted that it was wrong. That's all, I, that's all I'm asking for. Admit that it's animal, admit you're an animal abuser, that, that you're a hypocrite, that this is wrong. And he did, and it takes a lot of um, honesty. It was honesty, he said he lied to, yeah, and humility. It's a very humble guy, because that's what I did. Whoever's not vegan that didn't look at himself and go, hey, I'm a hypocrite, they, they wouldn't be a vegan yet, you know?